Good morning. I'm going to start uh, with a demonstration, so please wait, raise your hand nice and tall if you agree with this statement. Talented, passionate people are key to any mission. Great. Keep your hand raised. Get them back up. Keep your hand raised if you wish your government worked better than it does. Keep your hand raised if you are currently a government employee. That is a problem. The theme for the coming hour is, yes, we can. And I believe in the optimism and the sentiment of that statement. But if we want to deliver on it, we need to start focusing less on political action and a lot more on helping people live better lives. And when it comes to helping people live better lives, the number one tool at our disposal is good government. The past year should have taught us the difference between politics and government. It should have taught us not to raise our hands in victory simply because we passed a law or because we elected a leader. Because once you pass a law or, or elect someone, the work is just beginning. This is the case with any law. The Civil Rights Act will be 50 years old next month, and it was an enormous milestone in American history. But the only reason it has any meaning is because federal employees at the Department of Justice have been effectively enforcing the law every day for the last 50 years. Or you can take New York City's new open data law. Huge accomplishment, and a lot of people in this room were probably responsible for making it happen. But signing the law didn't open any data. Data is opened every morning when city employees go to their desks and keep servers up and scrub data and load data. That is what opens data. If we really believe so much in these laws, it's really unfortunate that so many of us choose to disengage when it comes to seeing them through and making sure that they deliver on their promise. So I care a lot about this because <clears throat> I've spent about half my career in government. Uh, out of college, my first job was with the Defense Department and uh, recently I finished, as, as Andrew said, I finished a few years at a, at a financial regulator. And I don't expect pats on the back for this, but I also don't expect scorn. And that's actually mostly what I've gotten. My friends on the left told me that I was helping kill people when I worked for DOD. My friends on the right told me that I was helping destroy the American economy. And I've noticed this more and more People, start, people are starting to, to think of government as some sort of foreign entity, not part of the public, but an alien actor that is doing things to us, and we have no control over it. How many times yesterday did you hear someone talk about the government and what they are doing to us and how we need to fight back at them? In a democracy, your government is part of the public. It is a product of the public will. Recently, a member of this community, someone who I think is here today, said to me, it's clear that uh, our government isn't going to innovate, uh, so I guess we're going to have to do it ourselves. And that just made me cringe, because doing it ourselves is what a democratic government is all about. That is the mechanism by which we solve our collective problems. We need to start thinking of government as a product of the public that we are responsible for. People who work in government are not faceless, nameless people sitting in a big tower in Washington. In fact, there are about two and a half million federal employees, and 85% of them work outside Washington. These people are your neighbors. They are the ones who give the Civil Rights Act its value. They enforce the Clean Air Act. They do important work. It really matters. Of course, when you're working in government, you don't always uh, get to only work on laws that you agree with. It would be a bit disingenuous of me if I uh, didn't also mention that government employees are responsible for the Patriot Act. Um, I, I, I really understand why so many of us feel like we're being victimized and how we have no part in this and how there, there really is an us versus them dichotomy. 
uh, and I understand why you could never fathom working for an institution that seems to so frequently violate your sense of right and wrong. But let me tell you more about what I did for DOD. I studied Russian language and uh, Russian, the Russian press industry in, in college. And when I got out, I, uh, and, and I, I took my job at DOD, I was supposed to be an intelligence analyst working for a place called the Defense Intelligence Agency, uh, working on Russian matters. And when I showed up for my first day at DIA, uh, it was January of 2003. And if, if uh, your memory goes back that far, uh, the US military was preparing to invade Iraq. So I showed up for my first day, and someone said to me, Matt, we know that uh, you're hired to work on Russia, but for now, you're going to be working on Iraq. OK? My job for the next few months was to find buildings in Iraq that were used by Iraqi command and control so that we could bomb them. I didn't agree with the war. In fact, a lot of my colleagues didn't either. But we had a job to do. The decision to go to war had been made, and we were going. Not just we, the people there, but the, the American public was going to war. And bombs were going to fall. Our job was to make sure that they didn't fall on schools and embassies and hospitals. Because the only thing worse than a bad law or a bad decision is when a bad decision is implemented, is implemented really poorly. When that happens, everyone loses. If you see something, if you see your government doing something that you don't like, the answer is not to fight back against them, it's to take ownership in it. I really think that government service is the highest form of government oversight. A lot of us here are, are technologists. And when it comes to working in government, the issue, the issue isn't so much um, ideological as it is career oriented. It's easy to look at government technology and say, I want nothing to do with that. That is a resume killer. My ideas have no place there. I'm an innovative person, and I don't see them doing anything for my career. I understand. But that is exactly why they need you. In two years, 60% of the federal workforce will be eligible for retirement. 60%. They're not all going to leave at once, but that is a big culture vacuum that is about to be created. And we have an opportunity to have our ideas heard in government, but we have to be willing to take the plunge and look for a government job. Government work is very hard. It is very frustrating. Uh, but I think we all need to go home tonight and take a look around and consider working in government. Because if you really believe that, uh, if you really believe that great government requires great people, then you can't expect a government that works for you unless you yourself are willing to do the work of government. Thank you. <laughs>